don't make big decisions when you're the most happiest. Don't make big decisions when you're at your lowest point because you're not going to make those decisions. And in a few days time, the decision won't be the same. You'll have a different outcome. Welcome back to a Road Less Doubtful podcast. Today, we're chatting with the beautiful Jess Lincoln. Human design is such a massive field. There's so much knowledge out there. It's okay to be completely different. Playing with your human design and realizing how you can show up and then how we all pull in different people for different reasons, how we connect with different people for different reasons. With or without human design, we have our challenges. The more you dive into it, the more things will start to unfold for you. Hello, hello. Welcome back to a Road Less Doubtful podcast. Today, we're chatting with the beautiful Jess Lincoln. Um, the chat today is a little bit different. I wanted to be able to offer you some different perspectives on human design, actually, because most of the time I'm in here, and even though I haven't talked a lot about human design, I'm in here talking about following your joy, what lights you up, um, being energetic, being really playful. And that's not to say that Jess is not that way, but she is a projector. And I wanted to give you an idea because I know that I've talked to a few of you who are also projectors and it would just give you a nice perspective on how that energy can flow and how she's navigated her life with it, uh, how she found human design uh, and how that's flowed throughout. So in true generator uh, projector form, I she, she, she responded to something on one of my stories. I chatted back with her, then I invited her on and she said yes to the invitation, which is what a projector will do. So I'd like to welcome Jess, who is a master NLP EFT practitioner. She's very knowledgeable in human design, more so than me. Um, it does meditation, runs women's circles. Um, so I'm going to hand it over and let her actually introduce herself better than what I can. So, hey, Jess, how are you? Good. Thank you so much for the introduction. Nailed it. Don't, don't, don't run women's circles. But close. Almost, almost to a T. Um, so yes, master NLP practitioner, EFT practitioner, um, certified hypnotherapist and meditation teacher. So I do run meditation sessions here locally in Harvey Bay and women's retreats, um, which I hope to incorporate more of those throughout the year. As for knowing more human design than you, look, I feel like human design is such a massive field. There's so much knowledge out there and... I wouldn't say that I know more than you. Maybe we just know different areas about different things per se. Um, but I love human design. From the minute, actually, no, that's a lie. I'll be very honest. From the minute I heard about human design and what my style type was, I was like, oh, I hope I can swear on you. Um, but I was free to can. No, I am not a projector. I'm not waiting for shit. Do not agree. Not happening. Let's just push that to the side. So, um, yeah, I, I know that with you, with human design, it was more of like, a, oh, this is really intriguing and I'm going to kind of follow that and learn a little bit more. For me, it was like, nah, fuck that. I'm not, they must be wrong. I've got my first time wrong. My, something's wrong. That's not me. Um, and it wasn't actually until I dove a little bit further into human design, into like the super next level stuff that I went, holy shit, that is me. Yeah. I find that really super interesting and it's funny that you say that because it was actually something that pulled me to talk to you. So two of the things you said, right, like maybe you don't know more. I still believe that you do and that's okay, but I think that's the whole cool thing about one, people in general, we're just different and it's okay to be completely different. And then playing with your human design and realizing how you can show up and then how we all pull in different people for different reasons, how we connect with different people for different reasons. And the more we sit in that space, the more those people, um, they come around and they they come into, into our awareness more. It is, I think, a, like a really cool thing. But what I think and what I've seen is like when I found out I was a generator, I was like, yeah, that makes complete sense. I just keep going into complete burnout because I just keep pushing through because I have all this energy. It doesn't mean I enjoy doing it. But when I talk to lots of projectors, it's like they don't want to be a projector because I think I think it's the conditioning um, of, well, no, like I can do anything. 
and I will do anything and I, I, I don't need to go slower and I can do just as much as the next person. But something in that space and that's why I wanted to get you on because I've sort of watched you navigate that from just my perspective and go but she is doing all of the things and then I like it's really nice because it's so calming and I have a couple of projector friends and I started working on these archetypes for uh, each energy type and it's something that I've been playing in and for me I look at a projector like a hawk and I just think it gives them this majestic like strength right it's not like this little wise old owl It's not boring, it's not, but it's like this majestic strength that you have. It's this inner wisdom and it's like this beauty of like you can just see everything and I wanted to start getting that across to some more projectors that are coming into it so that they don't have that feeling that you have and being like, okay, it's like I can see it all. I actually can. Um, So, yeah, I would like you to maybe explain to people how you changed that perception and where that started to look different for you. Yeah, cool. I really like that because so when I first uh, dove into human design and the very first thing that I seen was that I was a projector and I was here to wait for the invitation and that um, I was supposed to only work roughly four hours a day and then the rest was supposed to kind of be like just play, like rest or play or do something that sort of, you know, whatever. Sorry, when I first looked, it was rest and I thought to myself, no way, like that that's not me because I used to work in cafes and I'd work like open till close and I was fine and I was thriving and I had the energy and all these things and I was like that is definitely not me I just don't think that I'm only here to work four hours a day like that just doesn't make sense to me I don't agree with it don't approve whatever and the more and more I dove into it um because that was like the main thing that that got me stuck I was just like no I don't want to even look any further because you know all these things and I won't dive too far into all of the nitty gritty sort of under, because there's like so many layers in human design. And I feel like the top layer is kind of like your, your type and your strategy. However, when we talk projector, there's like this general um, kind of blurb, I will say. And that's what it is for projectors, is that you're not here to work all the time. You're here to rest more than you work. Um, but that you do have, like, we do have this bird's eye view. We're kind of taking everything in. We, without sounding like, eh, sometimes it can sound really, people can hear the word penetrating and they're like, oh my gosh, like you're invading my space. But like pen- uh, penetrators, projectors are here to penetrate through like the aura and to feel and to kind of get all of the information energetically. And so that is really, really cool. Um, and that's, that is definitely something that's widespread around projectors, but there's different projector types, right? So you've got an energy projector and a mental projector and a classic projector. I'm an energy projector. So when I found out that I was an energy projector and that whole four hours work thing didn't work, like that, that, um, trying to think of the word, doesn't really relate to me. Resonate. when I was like, resonate. That's the word. I was like, what is the word? Um, that's when I was like, oh, wow, maybe I am a projector. And it's just because I have this. So the only two defined centers I have in my chart are my spleen and my, and my root center. So when it comes to the defined root center, this is about like kind of having the mode of like you just ha- have energy spurts, right? One of the most funny things, and I know I'm going a little bit off track here, but one of the things that really no, caught my attention. I invite you to talk as much or as deeply as you want. I want because whatever's going to come out is perfect. So go. So with the defined root center, one of the key things that stood out to me was how we like to create stress to motivate us, right? So deadlines, even though deadlines for most people will be like, oh my gosh, like I I don't even know how I'm going to, like it can create overwhelm. For a projector, it's like if I set myself a deadline, it's like I almost need to challenge myself to beat the deadline. So if I say to myself, all right, I'm going to create this course or I'm going to create this thing and I have to launch it by this day, if that's truly aligned with me, it's it's a challenge for myself to actually get it done before that day and to have it set up and go. Sometimes that energy 
can also come in as like leaving things to the last minute. So like packing for a trip and all of a sudden it's the night before and you're like, fuck, why did I leave this to the last minute? But somehow you still manage to get everything packed and done and you're good to go. That was that energy for me that made me go, oh, that makes so much freaking sense. That definitely is me. Um, And that was one of the areas that made me go, okay, let's look a little bit further into this and let's dive deeper than just this four to six hours. So my energy comes and goes like it comes in waves um and for me as a projector it's really about just really listening into your body and I say that not just as a projector for anybody we need to really tune into our bodies but the thing that helped me more was actually tuning into my body seeing what gave me energy so even though a projector is here to work their four hours a classic projector a mental projector is to do their four hours of work if they're in the moment doing something that they love, they actually have like this infinite energy to get it done. There's no, oh, I'm drained now and I've been doing like my favorite thing for the last four hours. Like it's, it's not like that. It's it's totally different, but we need to rest hard and like and do the things that we love at the same time. Um, the invitation side of things, I kind of want to tap into that because I remember when I first heard waiting for the invitation and I was like, shit, I can't do anything until somebody asks me, like, what kind of oh, shit is that? To, <laughs> to then, but I, apologies. And I kind of hope that other projectors can relate to that and be like, yeah, you're right. Like, why the hell would anybody want to wait for the invitation? This is about bigger things too. So it's not specifically about like if you run your own business, it's not about waiting for somebody to ask you to do something so then you can create whatever it is that, you know, they've asked for. Whilst waiting, you're still doing the things that you enjoy. So for me in particular, when it comes to like sales and marketing and things like that, for me, the thing that I have found that works best is just sharing what I love. And when I share what I love and I'm actually loving the process of what I'm doing, that's when I get more invitations to do things. Whereas if I'm putting myself in situations where I'm doing things, but I'm not really like it does, it's not really what I want to do. I'm kind of saying yes, just because I feel like I need to. And I'm not truly listening to myself or I'm not resting enough. That's when I find I'm sitting there and I'm going like, well, why, why isn't this working? What is going on here? It's kind of just a little bit of a contemplation to be like, okay, well, am I well rested? Um, Am I focusing my attention on the things that I do actually enjoy? And rest, I go off on so many tangents, but rest doesn't mean laying down, doing nothing, right? So rest for any of the times, not just a projector, but for any of the times, it's what helps you switch off. So if switching off is going to the gym and running on a treadmill for 30 minutes, if that's what helps your brain switch off, that's considered rest. And Yes, as a projector, we need the physical rest as well as the mental rest. But I feel like for me, once I learned and listened to my body that little bit more, I learned that for me, shutting off by reading a book is enough for me. Like going for a walk along the beach is enough of rest for me. Just taking myself away, like sitting at a computer. I love the work that I do. And I do love sitting in front of the computer and doing like the administration stuff, the creative side of things. But I've also learned that I can't sit there and do that all day. That's a side of me where it's like, I actually find that draining after a while. So it's almost like I can sit down and do a little bit and I kind of do maybe like 45 to an hour increments, unless I've got like that root center pressure that's going like, okay, you're going to sit down and you're going to get this done. Like I created my very first website I created in like three hours because I was just like, I just had this hit that was like, you need to create a website. And it was just bam, 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 done. And some people are like, how did you do that? And I'm like, I just, I had the energy, I had the drive, so I got it done. And there was no other explanation. And there doesn't need to be another explanation. But um, yeah, like I've noticed that sort of sitting down at the computer for a while, it, all, it feels draining to me. I work better in a physical environment. So I, like as of for today, I got up and I did all my house sort of stuff and I've taken the kids to school, done the school run, and I went to work. So I've done a three-hour shift at work three and a half hour shift at work to race home to have something to eat to come on here but I'm not exhausted like and when I first looked into human design and being a projector part of me would have looked at that and gone oh well I will I'll have to decline the invitation because I'm already working my three hours and that's going to be exhausting and I'm not going to have the energy 
to do anything else. Does it make sense? Whereas like now I've learned to just tune in to listen to my body and I know what I can and what I can't do. When starting my journey of self-discovery, I felt alone and lost. That's why I'm so incredibly dedicated to this podcast and passionate about building you a place of community to help you remember exactly who you were before life got in the way. So with that said, word of mouth is one way we can grow this community. So please share this with your friends and family. And so you don't miss an episode, I'd love for you to tap the subscribe button. Now, let's get back to the episode. I hope that kind of answers I think what you said there is really important. Yeah, no, and I love it. And I love that you're like, I go off on tangents because I was like, good, because that makes me feel less bad in my waffling. So this is perfect, right? And this is how these conversations, I want them to go all the time because it's like, who knows where it's going to go? It's just going to go where it's going to go. But there's so much of that where it's so relatable. And I think in, in any of the types, and I think we'll come back to the waiting for the invitation and the responding a little bit as well, um, any energy management, because I still think there's, there's a lot there. But there's so many similarities, even though they're not the same. And I think the key pieces that I feel is like with the human design, you touched on, you know, you looked at it and you're like, no, it's not for me, right? Because you just looked at a few parts. So some people are going to take it straight away, some aren't. And I also think there's not a one size fits all. And maybe maybe it's not for anybody. And that's also completely fine. You know, it might be like you do, you know, your EFT, or it might be a bit of meditation or a bit of breath work. Well, sometimes it's just linking a few of those things together and you start to feel it. And I think what I love is that it is a bit of an experiment and you get to play with it. And it just becomes a little tool where you can then just come back to like self-awareness of what it feels like. And by using it as that tool, like you said, like you saw, okay, well, I'm only supposed to do four hours or I'm supposed to wait for the invitation. And what does that look like? For me, when I first heard I was supposed to respond, it was the same thing. I'm so used to pushing and controlling and doing, but for me, it was like, oh, it's almost a relief. I'm like, if I could technically just like not control everything and then all of this shit just starts flowing with me, like, whoa, what, like, that's like a superpower. How fun could that be, right? And then as a general, I just get to play more and just get to like, yeah. let's see what I can try on today because it feels good. Yeah. And then I would see all of these like synchronicities and I went, oh, well, actually that does work for me. Um, and you sort of touched on like, I have an open route. So for me, I can, I can put pressure on me best and then other people can put that on me and I can't even work out where the hell that's coming from, you know? So, but I actually work really well with the deadline and I, I think that just gives me some clarity and some focus because without it, I don't have that. Yeah. Um, and then you also touched on like, you're really open in your mind. You're actually open nearly everywhere. I have a lot more definition than you, but um, I'm open in my head and I'm open in my mind and I don't know if that's why we're similar because it, like you said, there's so many different layers but with that, I think that's why switching off, going to the beach, reading a book, taking your mind from the thing. It's like we like to just absorb a little bit of extra knowledge. And then that, well, for me, it gives me that next thing to respond to because maybe I just don't know what what I need, what, where I want to play next, where I want to have fun. Yeah. You know, and it gives me that little bit of, of a fuel to go go into. But anyway, now that's me going off on a tangent. But I just think it's more of a tool it's more of a tool to just start playing with that for yourself and going, okay, this is kind of what it's saying. Yeah. Where can I look at that? Where am I sitting in alignment with that? How does it feel in my body for me? Yeah. And then what is flowing easier? How do I have more energy? Do I feel more happy? Like you said, now when it was great. So when all of those things lined up, your website was done in three hours, you've nutted it out and you're like, bam, there it is. Yeah. For me, this retreat that I'm about to launch, same thing down the beach, in a space that just makes me feel calm. Yeah. Absolutely in my joy, chatting about something that lights me up. And then it was all done in like 20 minutes. We we're like, this is how it's supposed to look. This is what we're passionate about. It was a manifesting generator and a generator Amazing. just bouncing off each other going, yeah, right. Sparking, go. Sparking, this is how we do. Go, go, go. Done. And we're like, shit. Okay, now let's roll with that. Yeah. And we put a deadline on it so that we were like, okay, let's not pull out and done. Yeah. Yeah, and then we're just working it out as we go because the manifest is the manifesting generator is like, well, I'm going to go a little bit this way and a little bit this way. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to do yeah. this bit and this bit and this bit. And it's just really, really cool. Yeah. Um. So I think that's what I love about it so much And I love is that you can do that. I love that you touch base on that too about it is an experiment, 
because I remember when I first started sharing that I would do readings and things like that, um, which I was first invited into. So I had never gone into human design with the intention to become like a guide or a reader or, you know, anything like that. I, there was no intention of that whatsoever. When I first went into human design, it was because I was in network marketing and the, um, I can't remember what you call them, but like the people above me were telling me how to do something one way. And I was like, as soon as I started doing it their way, I was like, why isn't it working? Why have I just hit a brick wall? Like what the fuck is going on? And then there was on one of the calls, they were talking about human design. And like, so we jumped on and I've done like my human design quiz. And I was like, all right. And that's when I went, oh, fuck. Like if I'm a projector and I'm only supposed to work four hours and I'm supposed to wait for an invitation, how the fuck am I supposed to do network marketing? That was what my what process was. So then I was like, you know, network ma marketing at that time to me felt like pushy and salesy because of the way that I was being told to do it. And anyway, so then I kind of, that was my out to network marketing because I was like, you know what, I, I actually dread it. I do not get up in the morning looking forward to the things that I need to do. Um, and so I kind of left from there and moved into sort of like a coaching side of things. Um, and the, the transitions along the way to get to where I am now are a whole other story. But um. Yeah, and that was where I'd sort of gone, oh my goodness, learned about the projector thing, dove right into it. Um, and being, I'm going to touch on profile, but being a profile number of what line one, three, that resonated hugely with me because I really value information. Like I like to know all the details, like what's happening, why does that happen? I like to know the very depths of how things work, which I guess has kind of led me to where I am and what I do now. But um and then the profile line three is to experiment with it. Like it's to play around and just trial it, what works, what doesn't work. Um, and so when I was first ever invited to do a reading for somebody and I'd done it and they were just like mind blown, like, holy shit, how did you even know that about me? Like, how did you know all those tiny little details that like nobody else really knows about me? And it's like, well, it's in your chart. And they were like, yeah, but I've had like readings before and they've kind of just touched the surface. And I'm like, oh yeah, as as a profile line, like one, it's all about that depth. Like I'm not here to have surface level conversation. I'm not here to look at surface level things. I really like to dive deep with you. I didn't know you did network marketing. So I find that really interesting in itself because you did the same thing happened with me, but it was like, it was came kind of naturally easily. I never thought I would do it. So when I first started human design, if we talk about profiles, I had my birth time wrong. So I kind of had a natal birth chart reading. And so I had AM instead of PM. But I was like, I'm just going to play with that, right? Not a lot changed in my chart. Mm -hmm. Not a lot. One one of my moons changed, but my whole profile changed. Yeah. And so I was a 3-5. Or so I thought. I remember actually. I was like, yes, first. I resonate with. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I resonate with a 3-5. I just, you know, trial and error, that's exactly what my life looks like. I'm just here to trial and be messy and then just show people how it's done. Like, that's me. And then mum found my little card and it's like, no, Emily, not AM, it's PM. So I go back and I type it in. The good thing was, I was like, I didn't want it to ruin um, uh, human design for me because I'm like, well, everything else resonated. And then I can go, well, actually it was wrong. So now if this still resonates well then what a hot load of shit it is right but yeah. everything stayed the same except my profile then i became this two four which is this easy breezy genius now none of that resonates with me at all and i still really struggle with that i'm like nothing comes easy to me everything's a struggle you know and then i start looking into that i will know when that actually should resonate more because the whole point of it is you can't generally see it in yourself you need the people around you to reflect it back to you. But if you're so scared to be yourself, you're not going to get it reflected back to you in the way of like, ah, there's all my lessons. So anyway, bringing that back around into network marketing, because I had started to, I guess, with all of the shit I had gone through, become more of me, which is a, an ongoing process, as we know. I was like, I was happy to show up my own way on there and just have fun with it. I was loving that I was getting to travel. I was loving, I guess, before. And I was like, well, why? And then I realized it's just because I was being authentic and aligned to me. I wasn't having to do anything except be me. Yeah. But I remember I then was running some trainings and I was like, oh, well, let's bring some human design in because I noticed this in me. How can I help my team feel a mm -hmm. little bit more 
authentic for them because I didn't like, yeah, same thing, like uh, our clients, this is yeah. how you do it. I'm like, I can't, don't like sales. It's not, I don't. It's like, oh, it makes me sink. I'm like, I just want everyone to be happy. <laughs> That's all. I want to be happy. And so I did it. And then I had a couple of projectors in there. And because I was new to it, I'm like, but I don't understand. I've got to wait to be invited. And then how do I do this? And I was like, I, I actually did. I was like, I, I'm going to have to handle this. I'm going to have to go have a look because I don't really know. So I can understand how you felt like that yeah. within it because it's that really hard thing like you can show up and you could use your research you could have used your one three and had all of the information and just shared your information to yeah. people if it was authentic to you right and then they would have started coming to you and then they would have asked for your advice and then you would have shared it and that was the invitation and then it would have flowed but only if it's more you so you got, there's other things wrapped up in that so yeah yeah. So I just found it interesting that we sort of had that start in network marketing as well. That's all. And how that can look differently and how how it can wrap up into different jobs and different people aligned with you and, and people you work with and how that changes your energy. All of the things. Yeah. All the things. I remember you just triggered what I was originally gonna talk into, um, with human design being Perfect. an experiment. So it is an experiment. It is there for you to go in, take what take what resonates and leave the rest. And the more you dive into it, the more things, you know, will start to unfold for you. But I remember when that's where I was going with like being invited into selling. So my intention was never to go in and be a guide, to never give readings, to never do one-on-ones um, because like it just wasn't. And then when I was invited to do it and I started doing it more and then I started thinking, holy shit, I really need to watch the language that I use around this because I'm putting people in a box and putting a label on somebody and it's like your energetic archetype in human design is a generator. You are not a generator. Your energetic archetype is a generator. I'm not a projector. My energetic archetype is a projector and going and putting and like, so I had kind of stopped for a while and I haven't promoted human design for some time. So like online, I should say when I'm talking to people and it comes up like just naturally in conversation that's that's the best way for me to sell myself love I love what you said because before we started recording I said to you like I feel like I want to just sort of be that little bit of a catalyst like that's where I'm sitting now and that might change I just feel like one I'm not at the level like I don't like to call myself a coach I have a thing about that and maybe that's a shadow that I've got to work on like if I'm being completely honest that's probably what it is I'm like I'm still going through all of this and if I can just help you along the way great the same thing with those archetypes like you said about the energy to me it's like if you can just make a start because sometimes there's there's so much information out there if I could not have social media I would like happily not have social media if I can that's probably my hermit side as well it's like let me just retreat and when I just get my one-on-one conversations or I get to do these podcasts where I chat like this I walk away so lit up because I'm like this was fun but having that that thing that I feel like okay let's say you were brand new to it and you have no idea and I hand you this archetype that just to me is just like gives you this oh I can show up a little bit more powerful than what I felt like I have been able to because it's what I needed right so you help people in the way that you feel that you needed which is why it's cool to be able to like talk to you because you come at this from a different place and I and again it just alludes back to the start of our conversation everyone is here to help people in a different way but this energy of like this is your overarching energy and, and sometimes as an animal, I just feel like it's easier to hold on to than to be like, you're a generator. So to me, like a generator, I'm like, it's like a dolphin, right? So you're just joyful and you're playing with the waves of life and, and just create this narrative. And I love it. So I'm like, okay, but like you said, that to me just gives them that. So if they ever get lost, they come back and go, where am I not just playing in that energy or aura or whatever? Okay, clear your mind, clear the, cut, the, the clutter, Forget all of the noise. And then I also think, like you talked about the gates and the channels, like I don't even, I there's still so much to learn with human design, but I love, I love looking at the placements. Like that is my thing. I'm like, oh, that, and then I'll go double in gene keys and I'll come back. And I honestly believe it's almost like, and maybe it's because I have so many intuitive channels, which has been my hardest thing to grasp of like trusting my intuition my entire life. You know, I've got to have logic. I've got to have reason. Why don't I have defined mind and and head? I want to know and I want to be able to say things correctly. And, you know, I can never get my message across properly. And why am I not smart enough? So I've got these 
all these intuitive channels and I've got every fucking love channel you could possibly think of in my chart, you know? So it's all of these things, but I feel like, as I say, I feel like, and not, I think that like, I look at these planetary placements and the gene keys and all of these gates. And I feel like if you look at your chart, once you started dabbling and something takes your eye, you'd read a word or you, whatever, play with that one because yeah. it resonates with you for a reason. So I wonder it if is. you agree with that and if that's how you sort of started playing more. It absolutely is. So I looked at, and I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be very, very honest. I can't remember exactly what gate it is. One of my gates is that I will sort of, not I will, the energy of that gate is like it's a flirtatious energy. It's like drawing out, like flirt, not flirting necessarily in like a I want to take you home and sleep with you kind of way but kind of like a a teasing teasing playful energy that's going to bring out somebody's true identity right and I remember reading into it and I was like holy moly it's almost like a seductive like let's bring out who you really are like let's bring out who you're hiding underneath this like mask this layer I remember when I first read into it and I was reading it in front of my partner and he goes holy shit, that's you. And I was like, it really is. And I was always, I remember like growing up, I was always called like a flirt or a tease. And I'm like, but I'm not being a flirt or a tease. Like I I don't want anything from this person. Like it's just who I am. And then I was like, maybe I am a flirt or a tease. Like, and then it was almost like I had this, like I couldn't be that anymore because if I did that, then people would think that I'm trying to take home their boyfriends or that I'm like hitting on somebody or you know, if I, that energy, it does, it's not necessarily, you know, refined to male or female. I, I, it, I can do the same, I like, be that same playful person regardless of your gender. And it was funny because most people would only see it like if it was male, female. And it was like, oh, you, you're hitting on him. And I'm like, no, I'm really not. Like, nothing there. I am just a very playful kind of person it's just who I am and then I was like well I can't be that anymore and then I remember reading this gate and Chris being like oh this shit that is you to a T and I was like it really is and I was like that's really cool so that is where I actually first started playing and looking more and more into the gates because I'm like well if that's true for me what else is true like what else is in here what other energies am am I you know like incorporating and so many of them um but also to touch Hey guys, if this episode resonated with you, please take a screenshot and share it to your Instagram stories and tag myself at a road less doubtful. And if you're ready to lean into the parts of you that have been hidden away and start your road to less doubt and have way more fun, I'd love for you to join our community of like-minded women who build each other up inside our free Facebook group. Tap the link in the show notes below and I can't wait to see you on the inside and travel this journey together. And sometimes, sometimes suppressing, right? Because they've got that shadow side. And so I think what you just alluded to there, so I'm going to get you to go into that deeper because I think this is perfect. And I think with your background as an NLP practitioner uh, with the EFT, hypnotherapy, this is such a good thing. Like all of these can just all cross over so well because sometimes you don't know where to start looking within yourself. You're like there's more. I, for me, you know, showing up is too much or you know, wanting the best in the world, you know, this love for everybody and I don't know why people are mean or or whatever. We all have negative traits. I'm not saying that I'm the perfect human, but I have this, my whole channel, the perfected form, you know, so then when I've wanted to look pretty or like I want to help people feel better or I've had that negative connotation to that as well. Like how do I show up but not be too much? Just like you're like, I've got this flirt in this channel But there's a negative connotation. So when I was younger at school and I would be the one who blow dried my hair, well, I got teased because I was like, why do you care so much? It's like, but it just felt good to me. It wasn't about being better than anybody else. But I started to label myself in a way that was like, don't be too much, play smaller. And this is what I've had to unravel. So it's in there and it gets you to start looking at that piece of the puzzle. And then, you know, you can pull in those elements that you offer then and be like, okay, like where can I do my tapping and start to release that emotion, talk to my inner child. Again, not my area of expertise, so I'm going to hand that over now. But I think like this is what's so cool about it. It's like bringing it to your awareness for you to start unpacking. To start unpacking. And um, it, it's just like the saying, like until you make the conscious conscious, it's 
it's just, you know, it'll, you'll call it fate and I can't remember, and it'll rule your life. I think that's the saying. Um, the one well, until you make the unconscious conscious, it'll rule your life and you call it fate. Um, but until we do dig deeper, like, um, I'm probably going to throw a little bit back there, but so between the ages of zero and seven is where we, where we have most of our conditioning, right? It's where our programming comes into play. Like that is, that is so crucial to how we filter and how we perceive the world. And so human design for me and the way that I incorporate it, I'm, I'm going to share how I incorporate it with like my clients and stuff. So how I incorporate human design with my clients is if let's say one of them comes to me with, we'll call it an issue because I hate problem. Like we can create problems as much as we like, but they're just pieces of the puzzle. So like if a client comes to me with something that they would like help with and I'll be talking to them and I can sort of, I've got that knowledge now with human design where I can almost be talking to somebody be like, I know your energetic archetype. Sometimes I can pinpoint their um, authority and that's where I'll generally start with people is I'll get them to sort of, I, I will look at their chart specifically to spot their authority to help bring them back to listening to that. Before I get them to look at their type, I'll get them to look at their authority. So for me as a splenic projector, mine is about quieting down and listening to that that little niggle. And I, there's different ways that that niggle comes through for me. It's not necessarily always a voice. Sometimes it's a whisper. Sometimes it's a knowing. Sometimes it's full body goosebumps. Like I learned within my chart that I'm actually very, very intuitive, quite like you. And for a while, I didn't know what to do with that. I was like, well, that doesn't really make sense. Um, but the more I listened and the more I kind of just allow myself to go without having a plan or having a strategy or having something in place, like the more I just go, the easier things are for me. And so that's what I like to do with my clients is I'll pinpoint their authority, bring them back to that. So I've had clients that are emotional, say, let's just use an emotional generator for an example. So for them, although they're a generator and it's about bringing joy and doing the things that light you up, being an emotional means that they also have this wave. And then this, again, all the layers, there's different levels of wave, different types of waves. So their wave will play out in different ways depending on which channels and gates they have active in the chart. But I will bring them back to that and I will just remind them before they make any big decisions, wait until you're kind of neutral. Don't make big decisions when you've got like, when you're the most happiest. Don't make big decisions when you're at your lowest point because you're not going to make those decisions and in a few days time, it's not going to, you're not going to have the same, like the decision won't be the same, like you'll have a different outcome. So that's where I like to bring clients back to, to connect to them there. And then I go from there, depending on what they need. So to help them get to there, it's just, I, sometimes I will use tapping and just sort of like run through a process and it'll just be like getting them to tune back into themselves, quiet and down and just see where that feels or how that sits in their body. Um, now being a mental, a mental projector, it's not about feel, it's about knowing, it's about knowledge. So like they're actually meant to be logical. Um, my partner is a mental projector and that was a curveball and a half, but, um, yeah, like they're not about feeling into the world at all. So that's like, okay, so to know authorities and types is important. And especially with my clients and how I can touch base with them. And some of them go, you design, I'm not interested. And I'm like, that's cool. I just want to have a look at your chart and see how I can best serve you. And then I can go from there. And like you said, with the gates, um, and being able to use that. So when I can look and I can dissect gates, especially with hypnotherapy clients, if I can look into there and see where underlying shadows may be that are a part of their chart. So a lot of the time somebody will come to me with something they need help with and we'll dig deep, like really, really deep to find the root cause underneath that. And sometimes it's an event that's happened. Sometimes it's a traumatic event. Sometimes it's not, sometimes they can't pinpoint it. And that's where I look at the chart and go, okay, so these are the programs that are running in you. Let's dive into here and let's draw through hypnotherapy. Let's draw the highest of these gates and let's bring that back out into play and bring your attention and your subconscious to these areas. Um, so that's a really cool way to play with it as well when it comes to human design. I love it. I love that so much. Oh, I have so many ideas brewing. 
for you and I. Like I've just put them all on already. Like I'm like, oh, I'm going to be inviting you to try some. I'm going to try some things with you. So I'll be messaging you after this. Um. Anyway, besides the point. <laughs> watch my joy and excitement just run away with me as you say all this so my body's like responding um I because I have like so I'm like I'm a sacral generator so it's straight away it's that mm -hmm, so it's getting back to trust it I think so what I like about what you said is that authority piece can be quite simple but if you've forgotten who you are or you've forgotten what feels right that's a really simple way it sounds so simple it's actually not that simple but it is to come back to that awareness of what that feels like I think the splenic thing is really cool because I remember when I first heard that I was like, ah, oh, but it's such a, like it can be such a whisper and it's so instant and like how do you do that when you're so used to being in your head and overriding everything? And then I had someone explain it to me like, you know, when you're like driving along the road and you're just like, I should turn here, but you just override it and you keep going and then there's fucking roadworks two metres down the road. You're like, that's why I should have turned and that's just that little, that, and so I hold on to that all of the time it's just like that little I've got you in the moment and I know right and like what is you over the, so I've got the big gut punch and then the hold on yeah well it's funny that you say that because when I was experimenting with so as a splenic projector so the way that I started to experiment with listening more to my intuition and listening to that spleen was um that is what I would do. So I'd just be driving and if randomly it was like, turn right here or go down the street. It was like, I wonder what would happen if I didn't listen. And so I would do those things. So I would just be like, no, I'm not going to turn here, even though like my brain was like, turn here. And it's like, it is, it speaks once and it's gone. And so I'd go and then I'm like, right. Okay. That was cool. That's an interesting experiment to um, like that. The, yeah. They're the things that I would play with. Or if it was like, oh, I don't really feel like a coffee this morning. I feel like, you know, like a tea or a hot chocolate. Or I just feel like water. And then I would go, okay, I'm going to have the coffee anyway. And then I'd be like, D -d 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 -d. <laughs> even though that's not how I am usually with coffee, it's almost like sometimes it's like your body's, your body's telling you what it needs. Um, but one of my biggest, I would say defining moments of being like, holy shit, this is powerful um and completely off the tangent of here as well it is in his head my partner was looking for he was making something so that he could use it for his fishing lures anyway so he was going and looking for a dryer and he messaged this guy on marketplace for a secondhand dryer and all of a sudden I'd, i just blurted out i'm like i'm gonna come with you and he was like what and i'm like i'll come with you we'll drop the kids up at school and i'll come with you and he was like that's really weird. why you want to come with me to drive okay whatever come for a drive and we're driving out there and I looked at him and I was like, I don't feel good. And he's like, okay. And I was like, I just feel off. We're getting closer to this property. And all of a sudden my whole body started shaking. Like I was shit scared. Although like I didn't know what I was being shit scared of, but I was like, my whole body's really, he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, no, I, I really don't feel good. Like I, I don't think this is a good idea. And he's like, what's not a good idea? I'm like, I don't think it's a good idea to go out to this house. I don't know where it had come from. Like, oh, I know now where it had come from. But in the moment, I was like, I don't know where this is coming from. We pulled in the driveway and I was like, it's louder. I'm like, it's like full body. My brain is saying that we need to go now. And um, anyway, so we'd gone and we knocked on the door. I'm still trembling. And then it kind of, it eased. And I was like, oh, it's gone. Maybe it was nothing. Knocked on the door and nobody answered so Chris called the bloke and he's like hey I'm here and he's just like oh yeah, yeah my brother's there I'll get him to come up and then Chris is like you yeah, know worries we're standing at the car and then he gets a phone call back from the number and the guy's like oh yeah my brother's there he wants you to go down the back to the caravan and I'm like you know that uh -uh, that's not happening my whole body lit up and it was like four and Chris is like no 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 like he can see if he's in like we could see the car and I was just like well he can see us and he's like yeah he can see you. he's looking out the window at you and I'm like that's fucking weird hang up we're leaving I didn't wait. Like at that point, I was like, I'm not waiting anymore. Let's go. My whole body is screaming, no, this is not a good idea. Let's get out of here. And he looked at me and he's like, how did you know? And I was like, I didn't know, but my body was fully telling me no. Hello, hello. It's Emily here. You guys may have heard me talk about human design and will continue to do so throughout my podcast because it's helped me to expand my life using it as a tool along my journey. 
if you would like to take your first step on a road to less doubt, then download your own free personalized human design chart by clicking on the link in the show notes. Then as you follow along on socials or the podcast, you'll be able to integrate this and gain more clarity of who you are and remember who you came here to be. Lastly, I'd love for you to join our community of like-minded women inside our free Facebook group. All links are in the show notes. All right, back to the episode. Love that so much. So much. I think that is probably the best story we could have told. Um, <laughs> I have one really similar, but it's a lot more, it's a lot more fun than that. <laughs> it's a lot more fun. It's not because I think <laughs> I was in Ireland. But I think it's funny because we can very quickly write this stuff off, right? We can write it off as like, oh, that was a coincidence or, oh, it looked like a dodgy place or, oh, it just all lined up. And so we just write it off as like, we're not that powerful. But we're that powerful when we've got it right. And I think that's that's the best part of this. And so for me, starting with my sacral stuff, it was like, you can't ask me what I want for dinner because I don't ever know. I don't know what I want. You have to say, do you want pasta? Yes or no. Do you want? So I started getting people to ask me the yes or no question. So I could actually just respond to the yes or no and start to see how the hell it felt in my body. So that's kind of like the first thing that I will say to people. Like just start to learn that. Get someone who really likes you. And if I, that really knows me. So if I really am stuck on something, if I'm like in my head, I will call one of my best friends and I'll be like, okay, this is what I need clarity on. And they will start shooting like, do you like chocolate? Do you have blonde hair? Is your name Emily? And I'll be like, yes, yes, no, yes, yes. And then they'll ask me the hard hitting question and I have no time to respond. And I'll be like, yes, oh, fuck, there's my answer, sweet, right? <laughs> and I was like, okay. But in Ireland, uh, we were in Galway and we were walking along and all I wanted in Galway was like the first night we listened to these buskers and my whole trip of Ireland was just to listen to music and just like sit there and be surrounded and chat to cool people and listen to this music and the guitar and the language like that that's what I wanted and so this we went one night in Galway listened to these buskers on the street best night second night we were walking down the streets and there was just really nothing around there was a lot of young girls with not much on that was fine it was good to see but I was like I'm not I'm not seeing what I want to see and I just said to my friend Jen I was like I don't know how to explain this but I said I just want to try something I was like don't question me but if I get a feeling, I'm just going to turn and we're just going to go where I want to go. And so I would just get this turn right. And so I did and I turned right. And she's like, well, what about that one? That looks really good. And I was like, no, nah, hold on. Kept going. And we ended up in this random little pub. I like saw it, couldn't hear anything, just saw it. And I was like, we're going in there. She's like, there's nothing happening. I was like, I'm just, just let me, just freaking let me try this. Like, I want to see how smart I am. I want to try my superpower. We want this intuition. Like, walked in the door and no one was playing. But we sat down. I got my whiskey. People were amazing. There was these cool people sitting beside us. And we started eating dinner. But next minute, these two artists started playing. And it was the best music of the entire trip. He was on the guitar. He was freaking incredible. She was on the violin. Uh, he started like chatting to me. We got up on the dance floor. We chatted at the end of the night and it was like the best. It was the highlight of the trip. And I walked away and I was like, huh, yeah. Like, <laughs> so, I was like, yeah, you know, but you can write, again, you can write it up. It could have been a coincidence. But I was like, in that, I was like, no, um, let's just play with this. Because you stop, you stop trusting that. You get in your head, life takes over, you get conditioned. And I just I think this is where it's just really beautiful. Um, so I guess my question to you, probably one of the last questions is how do you feel or what do you think might've been different? I don't know, take this question however you want and run with it. But from when you started learning human design and what you were doing and the Jess you were then to the Jess that is now, like, I don't know you super well, but I see a difference in your energy. I see a difference in how you show up. I see a difference in like, it's funny that you said that flirtiness, but it's that charisma and that little bit of like a, a an underspark of like happy energy that I see coming through. But I'm just curious for you what you think the difference is and how you were where you were to where you are now doing what you're doing and how life feels. Yeah. Life definitely feels calmer. I'm gonna say calmer is the word that I would I would pinpoint it. Um and more at ease. Like 
And it probably sounds bizarre, especially somebody who might be new to it being like, oh, calm and at ease. That's, that, that might sound nice. It might feel nice in the body. But the me that I was going back three years ago was somebody who would, I, I would just say yes, because I didn't want to let the other person down. I just like, yeah, cool. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. And I would identify as a people pleaser. I was like, I'm a people pleaser. I just, I just can't say no, you know? And look, don't get me wrong. That's also in my chart. Um, but, uh, me back then was, I was stressed. I was cranky. I would yell at my children. I was, I was not a patient person and I would say yes to all these things. And now that I know better, I know what was happening, but sort of, I would say yes to all of these things. And then I'd be like, I don't even want to do it. Like I was tired and I was drained and the thought of going so I'm just going to skip again here. So my environment in human design is natural shores. And like, I wouldn't even want to go down the beach. Like the beach was the place that I used to be able to go and it would just shut out everything. Like I could just go and that's where my, like my ideas and inspiration and like things would come through for me. Except I was at a point where I was like, oh, I don't even, I don't even want to go to the beach. Like, I don't even have energy to go to the beach. I don't even want to do anything. Um... And like, I didn't even really want to do anything with my kids. And that sounds horrible, but that's where I was. And I was putting everybody else first. I was doing everything that everybody else wanted me to do. I was saying yes to whatever I could, because that's what I thought I should do. Um, or, you know, like people would want to work, not work with me, but sort of like, I would take people on in network marketing as like team, even though I didn't want to work with them just because it meant that maybe I might get a little bit extra in my network, in my paycheck or whatever it is that comes through. And it was almost like it became a need for money. And when I, like, if I look back to then who I was, um, actually, I probably would have even, I would have met you for the very first time at the Boutique Network event where you spoke. Here we had your wine and you were trembling and your voice was like this, but you did fucking amazing. That's the very first night that I ever met you. And then that was before I learned about human design. And you would have seen, I was like the person that was hiding at the back. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to make conversation with anybody. I was kind of just like, I just, I did not feel comfortable. I wanted to be there. I wanted to step out of my comfort zone, but I was like, I do not feel comfortable around these people. Like I feel like a fraud. I don't feel like I belong here. Um, and so I wouldn't even, I, I didn't want to make conversation. I made conversation with one lady and the whole time standing there, when she asked me what I did, I was like, uh, I don't, um, uh, I, I didn't even know what to say. Like I was so nervous and now I don't get those nerves. Like I used to walk into a room and feel like everybody was watching me. And now I walk into a room and like, there's this, not that there's a zero care factor, but it's kind of like a. I no longer worry as much what other people think. Um, and I've learned to listen more to me. Like if I say yes, and I know that it's okay to change my mind. That's the other thing that human design was a, a game changer for me. So even in the moment, if I say yes, and then I'm like that when the event is about to happen, because, you know, we don't know what we're going to feel. We can say yes to an event in a month's time. And then the days leading up or the day of, we can be like, I really just don't feel it. But conditioning tells us that we need to go because we said we would go. I've learned to respect that and honor that. So if I say, yes, I'm going to go somewhere. And then the day of, I'm like, I just, I actually don't want to. So then I will, I will openly say now, I just don't have the energy or I'm feeling really tired or I need to do this. or I'd like to do this instead. Um, so that's definitely helped me a lot. I still... I'm still working on, let's choose the right language. I'm still working on being able to say no to a lot of the things that I'd really like to say no to. Um, but I'm also, I'm also the type of person and I'm not going to say where it is in the chart, but there's also a section in the chart. Um, I'm also the type of person who likes to be hands-on and help people. So if I can see somebody needs help, I will physically want to help them. Um, so much to the point where even if it's a complete stranger, like I, I am literally like, I'll help you. I can help you. I'll take that off your hands. I'll carry your groceries to the car for you or like, you know, do whatever. If I can see that Chris is really struggling to do something, I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Like it doesn't worry me. 
mowing the lawn doesn't worry me. Taking the bin out doesn't worry me. If I can see that it's going to beneficially help another person, I will do it. Like I will do the thing. Um, and so for a while, even that played out in my, like, there was an experiment there with, do I actually want to, or do I feel like I have to? And I recently let go of a, somebody that I was working with. All right. So I'm like, how can I word this properly? I recently let go of the person that I was working with. Because as I really loved it, it was very hands-on. I was jumping in. I was going head first into all these things and I was taking something off their plate, right? So I was doing something that I knew that they didn't have the time for and I loved it. I thrived in it. And it was like, I I can see in a big point of view exactly where you need help. I'm going to dive in and I'm going to do it. But then I also have learned over the last three years of trial and error and experimenting with things if I don't feel, and this isn't, I don't do things for somebody to be like, oh my God, just thank you so much. And really, I'm so grateful that you did that. I couldn't care less if somebody thanks me or they don't thank me. But if there's not some sort of, they don't see my value kind of thing, if I no longer feel valued, and that's a funny feel, not a funny feeling, but it's a feeling that until you feel it, like, and everybody's going to feel it differently. But for me, it was like, I'm no longer valued in this position. I need to let it go because I'm beginning to resent it. So me going back three years ago. It's an energy. It, wow. It's yes. And it doesn't need to be verbal. It just kind of, there just needs to be some sort of reciprocation. Um, but me three years ago would have continued to slog my ass off. And then you go to sort of like, if we're looking at themes, the projector is success and bitterness. And I would go like I would be bitter. I'd be like, well, fuck, I'm doing all of this work for you and you don't even appreciate it. Right? Like, so that bitterness side would come out. And since I've learned that and I've played with it and I'm like, oh, right. So when I start being bitter and spiteful, I need to question myself, not what's happening around me. It's not the other person's fault, but I need to question myself where my heart is and what I'm doing. So I feel like me now is, is definitely more in tune with myself. I can take these different tools from human design and I can look at them and go, okay, cool. Yeah. I want to do this or no, I don't want to do this or I'm going to bleed in here. So yeah, definitely different. Definitely saying yes to more things that I wouldn't have. Like if somebody had have told me three years ago, I was going to be a meditation teacher or running retreats and diving into, like I would have looked at them and been like, you got the wrong person. <laughs> I couldn't love that answer more and I couldn't nod along more. Like the whole, all of it is like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, could it be more of a, a sacred response? Um, oh, my God. I don't even know where to start. I feel like I don't need to start anywhere. It's just like I think it's all the reasons that I wanted to have this conversation. It's the reason that I want, because that I love conversation, that I want people to just have a look at different things and find their way back to themselves because – it doesn't matter what the reason was that you lost yourself, but you said all of the things that I was feeling, right? Like mine, my marriage broke down. So I can't change that. I'd, whether I had have done all this before, I don't know whether it would have fixed it, but I was the same. I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to look at my kids. I didn't love life. I wish my environment was Shaw's. Like mine's caves and it makes no sense to me. And, and yet it makes complete sense because all of my downloads come in the shower and come in the car and it's that nice little safety space. But I love being down the beach, right? So, but it's those things of like, you, you feel disconnected. You, you've lost all of those parts of you. You don't know how to show up as you. So you retreat. But I think it comes back to, you know, you're not you. So you want to hide away because. It's not the you you want to show to the world. And so then you get to start looking at it and then you get to show up. Other people can see it, but it's you who's lost lost it. And then you get to start bringing it. And then the fact that like come full circle, you're now talking to a lot of women and helping a lot of well people in general by speaking to them and showing them how to stand up for them and use their own voice, I just think is the coolest thing ever. And I will touch on the fact where you said about that energy part um, and that reciprocal energy and that, you know, where it is in the chart and the, and the people pleasing. And But like you're one three, you're literally like a bullshit detector. Like that's just you, that's that's what, that's your superpower. <laughs> like part of it, it is just like 
that's you. You're going to feel it. And, and, and the projector aura, all of that, you're just like, I can tell. You can tell if someone's sincere or they're not, what they're going to do, what they're not. Like that's, that's a superpower. So it's just another part of being that as well. Um, and so honoring that for you. Yeah. I actually think it's um, funny that you said that caves doesn't really resonate with you, but then it does. And then you went into all these different aspects. And one of the things when you, as soon as you said it, my mind went straight to every time you share a picture at the beach, you're in a position, right? <laughs> you are in a position <laughs> where you can see everything around you. So I'm like, it does resonate. <laughs> you you are what? Yeah, I'm safe. I'm safe here. Everything is safe here. Yes. Yes. So as soon as you said it, I'm like, yeah, I... I get that. That that makes perfect sense now. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's why I like my little podcast room too. You know, it's in here. It's a wild little sanctuary. Um, like having my steak. Yeah. I can't remember. There's two different caves. Is it internal? Ex- no, it's not external. That's Valley's Markets. That's me. I was going to say, I didn't know there was two. So you're oh. sorry, yeah. Um, I didn't even know that. I don't want to so, know. but. What's interesting is we both, you know, um, our senses are both touch and I think that's really fitting for both of us too, you know, even though we're, we're both, how we do things. Like for me, I can even relate it into my tattooing, you know, I'm, I'm playing with people's faces. You know, when I first when I first read that, I was like, touch, nah, like, but I mean, I love physical touch, but for me, I'm like, oh, but I'm literally playing on their third eye. I'm hands on. I feel their energy. I get it. I've got to learn to dump that as being non-emotional. I've got to be like, I got to dump that at the end of the day. I've got to get rid of everything. You know, you with what you're doing. There's just, there's so much. There's so much that we could go on with. But I just, I think you have so perfectly allowed people to see a projector in such a beautiful way of like being in in an energy that's not just like, I don't know how to describe it, but it, like I said, more, more hawk, less meek and mild, less, yeah, just like, I, I don't even think like hated is the right word. It just sometimes when you like to say it's like, you've got to rest, you've got to wait for the invitation. It's like, oh, life's going to pass me by. It almost gives off that vibe and I, it's just not that It is all. not. And so, I, yeah, and so I just think it's, it's again, it's letting go of that conditioning just like a generator has to let go of the conditioning of like just because we can do all the things and, you know, it doesn't mean we do all of the things, we find what we enjoy and letting go of that and letting go of some of the people pleasing and not saying yes to everything. Every, every, everyone just like, with or without human design, we have our challenges. Yeah. Um, just as a projector, like it's not that, it's not that you have to wait for life to pass you by. It's just about finding the best way for you. And like you said, deep diving into your chart or, or whatever. But I just think it was beautiful. And so thank you so much. And like I said, I've got, I don't know why, but so many ideas. And for some reason, salsa dancing, retreats, bringing out your flirtatiousness, bringing out parts of my love, my intuition what? and like my playfulness because I've got this part of my chart. And for me, it's what I've repressed is this sexual, like this sexual side of me that's always been like, I'm not allowed to have that. Yeah. I can't be, again, it's that too much. It's like, that's that feminine energy too. Like, oh, this stuff just plays into so many things that we repress. Um, the conditioning, the push, the the masculine energy, the where we can pull that back, the shadows. So I think we can leave it there, even though we could go on forever. You can help people with any of those things. So do you want to tell them where is best to like get in touch with you? Um, how, yeah, how you can help them best. And obviously everything will be in the show notes. Anyway. Cool. So I'm predominantly on Instagram. Um, and my handle is at underscore Jess Lincoln. Um, website, Facebook, they're all kind of under the same thing. So website is just www.jesslincoln.com. Um, and how I can help all of the things. No, not all of the things. Um, but essentially I do, do, I do, do, I do human design readings. Um, so I do a 55 page blueprint and I also do one-on-one. So the one-on-one is essentially like, I like to do them intuitively. So unless you, if it's like somebody was to book in, unless you were to say, I want to look at these areas in my chart. I'll bring up your chart and I'll look at your chart and I'll draw out the areas that I feel you need to hear or that I feel will help you. Even if I don't know you, I still get those feelings. Um, And then again, like 
NLP. So if there's any sort of areas, any, um, I'm trauma informed as well. So any coaching sort of, I don't like the word coach either. You know, it's funny because it is definitely a conditioning piece because I look at coaches in the world now and I'm like, it's so easy to throw that name there. Um, we'll call it a practitioner. So as a practitioner, I like to dig, like, I like to dig deep though. So if there is something I will actually, I will probably push and challenge to get to the very bottom of it, which some people are quite ready for. Some people are, but that's available as well. Or if you're local to Harvey Bay, come along to one of my meditation sessions down at the shedding. Amazing. Thank you very, very, very much. And I think what I love about this is, and one thing we sort of said when we started, re- when I reached out or you chatted to me, was like, I can offer some things in human design or just as a person and you have all of these other things behind you as well, but people resonate with different people. You know, there's different energies. And so I wanted to be able to have Jess on here because maybe you've heard human design from me or maybe, you know, like I had Morgan on who talked about NLP and now it's intrigued you, but you know that you've got now someone local and you've heard Jess talk and you're like, yeah, that that really resonates and her energy sits with me and I understand and you'll want to connect with her. So Hopefully you guys got something out of today's episode. Jess, thank you for coming along. Until next time, guys, I'll see you soon. Bye.